are you? And thank you for joining me. Um, there is a bit more time on, on our hands in that sense that we can, we can answer questions differently. I do like talking to you guys live because, again, not only the interaction, but I move. So it's really hard for me at times to type an answer. I like to see a video and I answer with a video. That's just how my brain works. So there's a couple of munchkins new to the group that um, have SMA, which is spinal muscular atrophy. There's different degrees of it if you're not familiar with it, but a lot of you are also here right now because you have low tone or hypotonia. That's my son. My son they actually thought he had SMA, so I've been familiar with it for years now. Um, we went through, uh, I hate to say it, disease of the month with his testings from various forms of muscular dystrophy, which SMA falls under. Um, to uh, cystic fibrosis and so forth. Uh, as far as his his regression at 13 months, he lost about 60% um, muscle mass. Uh, muscle mass, what people also don't understand with hypotonia, you can't create something out of nothing. When you actually lose the muscle, when you lose the function of the muscle, and this is what I wanna talk about, why I believe movement lesson works so well, especially for cases like this, because there's movement within muscle, but there's also the amount of muscle that you have. So with fat, you can always have increase the fat. So that's what people don't understand about getting bigger. But if you do not have the muscle cell itself, you cannot build a muscle out of nothing. You might strengthen the muscle, but also this is where people don't understand muscle. You can strengthen a muscle, that doesn't mean you're going to have movement. And that's what you see with, let's say, cerebral palsy. You have a, a, a huge muscle mass that's working, but you do not have transitional skills or being able to move the movement from one area of the muscle into the other. This is very similar also with SMA. So what happens with SMA is, first of all, there's, there's very little, if at all, genetic testing right at birth. It is, it is a rare genetic disorder, but it's not as rare as people would like to think. Um, and so babies are not tested for it, per se, in the hospital. Even if they are being tested for it, um, because there's maybe another child in the family that already has SMA, they know that there's a carrier situation, um, they still go off of, of breathing and respiratory responses. And when, when a doctor says, oh, the child's at 98% oxygen, you're fine, you don't have it, well, you know what I mean, the, the tests come back um, and the failure is starting to happen within a week or two. Um, so a lot of kiddos go home okay, uh, but by at one month of, of age, they're just failing significantly and most pediatricians are not set up for it. That being said, I want to talk about, this is a perfect example of movement and movement uh, for quality, for stamina, and, and, and what movement for strength is. So just because, again, you have muscles doesn't mean you have abilities to move. Arnold Schwarzenegger is not gonna play the piano. You can't go from that kind of muscle mass into fine motor skills, as one example. Um, you can get guys going through boot camp, that doesn't mean they still can climb the ropes or get over the wall. You know, just because you've, you've increased that muscle mass, right? And you see with astronauts, three astronauts just came back to Earth today, right? Uh, again, high level PhDs, probably the top athletic condition going into it, they've come back with massive muscle loss. But because they don't know how to move without this interaction of muscles, that's where you see the failure, right? So with SMA um, in particular, there are drug options to prevent the progression of SMA. So Spinraza is the most common. I can never remember the name of the other one. I'm sure someone will chime in, but that doesn't matter. But what science and doctors believe is they've stopped the SMA, now the child should be okay. And this is where I have feel that I've done my research from my son's side of view and why movement lesson is as successful that it is because it's based off these principles. When the system starts, when our bodies start to fail, it doesn't matter if it's a senior citizen or a young child, the brain and the body decide what's as important. Movement becomes very low on the totem pole, right? 
We want to breathe. We want our heart to, pre to, to prevail and the brain activity. We do that at an unconscious level as well as a conscious level. Our doctors might be involved with these kind of motions, right? When the movement stops, especially this rotation, and this is what I want to explain to you, there's rotation within the muscle cells itself. If you want more information on that, I've got two papers I prevented, uh, presented to Oxford and uh, a couple few years ago. The presentations are online. I've got my papers on that. But the I'm presenting more and more that the body itself works off of rotation. Now, for simple persons, I always say, you cannot do a functional movement without rotation. I can't turn a page of a book or feed myself, dress myself, get out of bed in the morning. I have to have rotational movements. Those rotations come from inside. Our heart, as they're proving now, is helical in structure. Atoms are, our cells are. But if you actually look within a muscle structure, the myosin and atkin, um, when they go in for uh, ATP production, when they're going in for calcification and an exchange, it is not a sliding filament, which most people learn about in med school. I believe it's a rotational filament. You can see the rotation within the structure that the filaments are, are rotated, right? But for some reason, they believe it's a slide. But even if I just do this with the string like this, you will see the rotation prevail, right? So. When, when I take this, and this is where I'm so glad I hope had, I'm old and I have different types of toys, uh, a lot of uh, us had this button on a string. This is muscle function. So when I reach, right, and this is what creates our perpetual motion within movement, right? As I'm going from side to side, right, this is where I get my power. And I have active and passive, right? where I can transfer movement from one side to the other. In other words, if I contract my arm right now, I can't feed myself, right? This is not, the elbow does not create movement. It is a transfer of movement, right? So again, for functional movement, what needs to happen is a rotation has to happen from within. So just as you know, if your heart fails right now, or if your liver fails, you better have someone that knows how to restart a heart. You cannot restart your own heart. Mm -hmm. I believe when the rotation fails within the myosin atkin, within the system itself, you better have someone there that can restart rotation. This happens with open heart surgery, any major surgery, a knee surgery, a hip surgery, the first thing your doctor tells you is no rotation, right? So when the system has been prevented, just like astronauts, this is why I study space in relationship to babies, right? An astronaut, there is absolutely no rotation in outer space. Right? With lack of gravity, lack of rotation, their buoyancy increases, they float, they don't have any functional movements, they have muscle mass failure, and they come back here, and nobody reassimilates the rotation within their system. So, and this is where, again, I just have another big gravity paper coming out and another gravity book coming out where I'm introducing 20 theories within this string of gravity and living beings. So the next couple of months, there's going to be coming a lot from me uh, on on biologically uh, forming and moving within gravitational principles, right? So when that rotation is stopped, this is where the gentle touch of movement lesson, where you're coming in and you have to offer that aspects of rotation, right? There's no way a baby, and this is where you see it on the video reviews, it has nothing to do in a sense with SMA and low tone, but I wanted to cover the function of movement itself from within, within SMA, within that low tone that people are missing. I was told every day, oh, if only Graham was stronger, he could do blah, blah, blah. He was never gonna walk or talk. At four, his goal was to say ma. So I have that empathy there, not to the severity, but, but really, you know, every doctor's appointment, my son was gonna live for a year, two years. He wasn't gonna make it till five on top of that, right? He did have a mothless influenza in staff. He was severely sick right, but overlooked that they were looking for a neurological or genetics condition. So, and my dad has charcomery tooth CMT, so again, I have a family history with neuropathies, right, but, but, but he and his brothers had the adult onset, one has passed from it. So, so that, that familiarity of, of understanding muscles in regards to movement is very personal. Now, my son is now a black belt. Right? He is so hypotonic, it's not funny. He's six foot one, he can walk, 
he's in student council, he still has full-blown autism, he still has the hypotonia, he still has the issues of it, but at the same time, right, from, from just years of working with these kind of principles, right, it wasn't one lesson that helped Graham, it was, he's, he's a lot of work, right? So that's what we're looking at, and that's what has to be understood. I don't mean to sound frustrated, but it is so hard for me as a mom, working with you guys who are mom, seeing that again, you're being told the same stuff that, oh, they'll just never be strong enough. They'll never be anything like that. And so it was a perfect opportunity this week because we have videos from Johnny, Ashton, and then also from Aaron. So Aaron has two children with SMA, as many of you know, because this is a very tight community. And her, the, Christina, her baby, is now crawling. Now, I really don't know many kids with SMA that are crawling, right? If, if she's one of the very few. But from birth with her, what now she, she, she's been doing movement less than forever. She's a practitioner. From birth though, she did the newborn assessment on Christina. Now, Christina was at high risk because her sister also had SMA, right? So they have four children to now have SMA. But the doctor said, no way. And I'm gonna do actually a, a video I'm gonna post up by this weekend to show you what the doctors thought was a typical baby. They still had to test her for SMA because of the risk factor, but they all just said, there's no way she has it. She goes, nope, I just did her newborn assessment and she has it. She knew by the lack of rotation already within the pelvis that she had it. Now, by three weeks into it, you could see again, she was actually even more severe in that aspect than her sister was because no two presentations of SMA are necessarily the same, even though it's, it's from uh, the type one. So you have those aspects of, of knowing, but again, she just started immediately doing rotation within her because she saw the rotation deteriorating, she needed to, to get in there. So just like CPR, you literally have to go to every cell within the body and work to, to, to bring back this rotation, right? And you'll see it when you go to reach for something. Um, it was really fun at Oxford. I, I handed around a, a bunch of button toys to people and uh, now I'm, I'm jamming this. Um, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is really what a muscle feels like. Um, and everyone's, you know, at the, in the Independence Hall and so forth and, and this great big hall. Uh, it was such an honor to be in just the age of Oxford, the whole, the architecture side of me, and doing this with the muscles. And, and again, this is where, when that rotation is gone, you'll see that, uh, depending on where the system is now, with Ashton, and you, where I would say with you, we've got to get after that. The cellular rotation is key um, for your daughter. However, also for the spine, and then on top of that, what also happens with, with a lot of SMA, and this is more the case with Johnny, what you need to work with is uh, you can see just the labor of the BiPAP equipment. When the system is, is engaged, and, and again, we have to keep these kids breathing. A lot of the SMAs have ventilators, BiPAP, CPAPs, HPAP, depending on where you are, cannulation. Um, and as I'm doing a cranial course, it's not ready yet. It's much more advanced. But, but the, the, the sutures are starting to, to engage into a collapsed um, movement. And it, it, I'm going to have to talk you through a, a pretty advanced cranial. Um, the, the zygomatic arches and the zygomatics really have to be uh, adjusted and brought out. This is different than cranial sacral. I know when, when I talk about things like I have a laser, right? The laser, again, is to promote inner rotation. Everything that I'm talking about, that's what I'm offering here. Just because I'm using a laser doesn't mean, oh, I'm doing what everybody else is doing. Um, my brain doesn't work like that. I'm not questioning people, but I still want something that's best advantaged for you. So I am coming out with a huge cranial course, but because I wasn't finding the solutions that I needed to work with, right? And then so from what I found out, so I'm offering now the cranial course. That being said with you, Johnny, um, the, the, head is, the head is so heavy. And, and we can all guys do this. We can, we can just rest our heads down. And this is what people think low tone is. And now just imagine that your cheeks have just collapsed and keep them in this position. First of all, it's very hard to see, right? 
and, and this, the vision being off is really because of the shift of the zygomatics, the cheekbones with the frontal lobe, and you'll, you'll, you'll see that shift happen. When that shift is there, and now if you act like your cheekbones are collapsed, and again, I haven't changed your muscle tone, now I actually feel what it's like to try and get up. Do this when you're lying down. It is so difficult. Now you and I, as adults, have overcompensation skills. If I take a skill away from you, your brain has the comparison. So this is the next journey you have to go into when you're dealing with a form of osteodystrophy, SMA, low tone, is our children have never done a movement correctly, for lack of a better words. They've never done the movement another way. They've never done the movement with uh, a different type of purpose, right? And so for them to continue to have that kind of thrive, you're asking for an adult function to overcompensate. And so to put them in muscular-based positionings, like all fours or like that, that maybe another child should be doing, is not the approach that I take working with SMA. We first have to restart that rotation. That is just crucial, right? That rotation, I don't care if it's the pinky toe, all the way in, everything has to be initiated. That initiation of rotation is a biological life force, right? I'm gonna, you see it when, even when I talk about plants coming out and plants time lapse, you will see this rotational system. It's a structure of movement all living beings need. That's why the planet Earth is living, because it has inner rotation and exterior rotation. The moon is not. The moon is centrifugal force. There is no rotation. We never see the outside of the moon, right? We only see one spot. There's not a living cell on that rock, right? It is a rock. That, that principle of rotation is no difference within the human body. It's crucial. It's a different approach. It's not necessary for everyone, but I'm telling you these aspects can be taken for cerebral palsy. Because again, that's another thing. People think it's the brain that directs the body. That happens as we age. Now that aging could be a week into the process or a couple of years into the process. If I have fallen off this table, I am suddenly now more cautious because I've had the experience of a fall, let's say. Whereas a baby and infant are first movements, and this is what I'm trying to teach you with the newborn assessment and all of those kind of things, the movement is what formats the brain, right? The, the, the brain is not gonna say, oh wow, weight transfer is such a novel idea, let me work with that, right? And this is where, again, your approach to touch, this is why I don't give a diagnosis specific. I look at that child. Now, if you have this whole conversation and throw in vision with it, oh my goodness, now we have a whole nother thing. Because again, if my eyes have never looked over here to the side, I have lack of peripheral vision. I have lack of peripheral movement because I don't have that through my system. Now, you and I, we do this. A child would never do this. They're not owls, right? A child's whole body. This is how a baby learns. And that's another thing we have to do with SMA is we have to look at those simple but yet foundational transitional milestones that are really significant within the child's body for them to start to move. But if you approach that the muscle has to get stronger and therefore you will have movement, the frustration that you will have and your child will have, I'm sorry, is going to be very significant and the give up factor for both of you is going to be very high. That weight transfer is the first way of movement. Weight transfer with rotation. It's just physical law. Babies are born at 85% water weight. They're born um, with way more bones and no calcification. So physically, right? I know it's early, but we're bringing out our wine glass. This is how, by natural law, a baby has to start moving, right? When I start putting on equipment or placing a child in only one position, let's say, this is logical, if I only leave this wine glass in this one position, the water will only have experience within this area, right? Now again, I have to physically move the glass to give the water the experience that it needs to do all of this, but it's very similar with the human body, right? Um, I, I can very easily say I cannot dance, let's say, salsa very well. 
but I also can say I don't have the experience of even working with it, so how can I even say that about myself, right? It's only until I experience it and practice it and do it to different, say, forms of music and do it to different groups of people and to do it with different days of the week that I can say, wow, I, when I'm rested on Saturday, I'm so much better. That's when our brain's cognitive areas change, right? So for our munchkins, when a play toy is just a Band-Aid, when the weight of just the Band-Aid is all that they can handle, most people would see that as a failure. That is huge, right? And, and it should be uh, uh, celebrated, right? It is going to be a different level of play. I get that, right? But if you take these types of transitional milestones that I'm trying to teach you and just incorporate these simple but profound movements, it's really no difference in building a house. If my foundation isn't good, the first floor starts to show, eh, but by the second and third floor. And this is where too, for a lot of our kiddos, they might have horizontal skills. Again, I'm not looking for fault. I'm trying to perfect, I should say, or give more opportunities to those skills. And then we can start working on those vertical skills. Um, there's quite a few videos right now. It's, it's the child's not even rolling over correctly and, and people want help in crawling and standing. And it's, it's not a frustration of me, but I get it that we want that vertical achievement but we still have to appreciate those, those, just those basic needs that we need, right? Just like we have basic uh, provisions in our house. This is where the quarantine or where the lack of foods have been bothering us because all of a sudden our basic needs are suddenly not being met. And that's what's frustrating on our human, on our human beings, right? You and I might be complaining about hand sanitizers and wipes, but take that same type of critical thinking and put it into like, you want me to get that glass today? Like, I can, I can hardly see it, right? And now you want me to say, oh, use this hand, use this hand. So these are where I look at movement lesson differently, but I really feel that if you just stay within these principles, our boot camp starts in a week. We have the movement lesson boot camp is for everybody. It's all the basic principles of movement lesson, all free for nine days. It is there, it is for you, right? We're there to take care of you. This is what, I'm a mom, you're a mom, excuse me for the dads that are watching, um, but I'm still a mom. Um, I believe a parent has a right to help a child, right? So we really need to look at, A, helping each, each other, but, but we're going through different times. Um, a movement lesson training is online. That's another thing. For those of you realizing you're not going to have a home program or therapy-based programs for your child, I would say for over a year. Um, our, our kids are really at the short end of the stick. Take the boot camp. If movement lesson is for you, you can jump into segment two. It doesn't replace segment one. Segment one was amazing. And I'm sure there's people here from segment one that will tell you, please do segment one. But we're suddenly in quarantine, we're in lockdown, we're seeing how this situation is changing our lives. I'm making adjustments just like you are. Um, I'm willing to say do the boot camp and jump into segment two. Uh, Donna has a question. Uh, this second boot camp will be different from the first one or is it a repeat of, for the new parents? It's a repeat for the new parents, but it's also, again, you've learned, you've seen differently. Um, no, I'm not going to keep coming up with new things. Um, right now, we're, we're doing the movement lesson training. Again, uh, what you see online and, and what I help you with is just the tip of my iceberg. Well, many of you will tell, me, tell, tell you as you do the training. If you've already done the boot camp, I really highly recommend the subscription site. It's a wealth of videos there, um, but it can be just so much as a refresher as well. How do we get, in, how do we get into the boot camp? Uh, you just write, write I'll, I'll put right as soon as the live is over, I'll put the link in. It is free. You just sign up. Starting April 25th, it will go live. Um, it is seven days worth of movement lesson material. We will discuss touch, the spine, standing, the vision, the hands, the feet. It covers all the body parts that you need to do. Um, movement lesson still has a ton of free videos. Just because I do a video on adults, use it. Um, I know your child might be two years old, but I can explain more an adult and then you just work it with your child. Um, okay. I don't do diagnosis specific. If you want, uh, again, for those of you on the subscription site, I'm now adding a whole new course on vision, let's say. Again, good, solid, basic material.
do you need to see or children before the boot camp? Um, this is where we don't have to see your child before. However, this is what the group is for. Um, uh, people post videos and I review them. Like right now, I've just reviewed Johnny, um, Ashton, and for for Aaron, right? This is what I do. Now, I have other videos that I need to review. Um, and I have the next Facebook Live will be, I think, next Wednesday. Um, I try and do a live like this once a week. But, but again, SMA is, is the, the number one rare genetics and I know people will probably argue with me I've, I've worked with everything wolf Hirschhorns. I you know again there, there's the rare genetics in general I, just because again this is why I don't like to use diagnosis but SMA and hypotonia I think is a very un misunderstood because people think you need the strength remember little old ladies can get to the supermarket just fine because they have balance they have weight transfer and they have rotational movements they do not have core strength they do not have but they have core movement that's what you're getting at a movement lesson is the core movement aspect side of things. How can we use movement lesson to uh, try and help our children speak? Um, I have a great course on, um, on swallowing, uh, which again, what people don't realize with speech, again, the foundation is to articulate the changes of breath to a swallow function. If my body says I need to breathe off of swap versus swallowing, and again, I know you're looking for speech, the foundational movements are really crucial. It is a very good course. I can tag you below. I think it's only $40, $39.99 um, on, on how to swallowing. It is a really good specific on touch the head. But again, this is where posting a video. I can tell you right now, if your child has issues with speech, right, uh, uh, the occipital bone is tucked under, the hyoid didn't come into it. Again, this is advanced stuff. This is what I look at. But I can bet you, too, that most likely your child has issues with vision, right? So if I have one eye, let's say, that, that's stronger than the other, that ocular muscle pulls right in and it just tucks that hyoid, and this is where it, it, this speech is very labored. So I look at videos and I respond with videos. That's where my brain works best. But just to say speech, that's a loaded question. And Krista asks, will the boot camp give an introduction of how to do the movement lessons at home? Yes, yes. No, this is why I'm, I'm relaunching it again. We are now not only in quarantine, but you're all learning. School is off. Therapies are off. Center-based therapies are off. Uh, lockdown restrictions, travel restrictions. Our kids are not getting therapy this is a great thing you will get to go on how to work on the spine how to work on it is a great basis for your home program and then not only that but you're learning the touch what I like about the boot camp is it makes you do movement lesson every day it's very hard when someone says oh I tried one video no this is it's, it's a new concept I get it I have different language I get it I'm not trying to sell you anything it is free um, and it, it's just something that's necessary. Okay. You're good? And Amy Concilio, I am working on Claire's pubic bone strike. She keeps reverting to using her stomach as eight foot. Do you have any videos that explain activating the pelvic ligaments, specifically the inguinal ligaments and the ligament around the sacrum? Again. This is where you're looking at the anatomy of the child. If I can just see a video, even if you post it into these comments, I can tell you right now there's more than just that going on. The body does not work as one part. It works as a complete system. When there are glitches in the system, what you're seeing is only the stress of the movement. Unless I know that a child, let's say, had a hernia operation at that point, it is the last place that I'm going to be working on. I realize what you're seeing is a tight ligament. Um, and it might be valid that it's tight. That's not what the cause is. The cause could be through the ankles or through, again, that they have astigmatism, let's say, or, uh, again, a torticollis that was unresolved. These are things that I look at are a much bigger picture but, but because the rolling over wasn't successful, that's where that started, the weight transfer, especially crossing midline. I can go on and on in different directions, not to confuse you, but there are many things that the human body is capable of. What you need to start looking at is the way your daughter is actually 
processing movement through her system and then what to do. But yes, just I have the free videos on working with the baby. I know she's older than that with the weight transfer through the belly and that would be perfect we have, if you don't want to post. We have lots of questions, so okay. we're going to go through them pretty fast. Should I be working on the pelvic strike more for uh, walk, waking, walking and balancing or you, more in the feet? If you want a child to walk and they don't have a pubic bone strike, they're not going to walk. That pubic bone strike is the first essential movement needed for a child to walk, and that is a crucial area. But again, depending on the age of the child, that I would not not address the feet, that synchronized movement, but again, uh, you might have a glitch in the upper thorax in the spine where it's not crossing mm -hmm. midline. So that's where your pubic bone work has been a little frustrating because you haven't synchronized those two movements and therefore the feet can't drop or present into walking. Uh, if uh, This is Jenny. If we are to send you a vid video, should we contact you first to see what we should try to capture to show you for a review? that is most beneficial. Okay, so the most beneficial for us, again, if you're looking for a, for a free video review up here in the group, and as you can see, the group is great. Um, we really keep it to we're respectful. It's not a privacy mm -hmm. issue, it is a private group. So what I'm looking for in a video is the most successful, what I call a transitional milestone, right? So when you're able to transition, now people say prone to supine, no. It's the transitional movement going from the back to the belly or the belly to the back, or transitioning from lying into sitting, transitioning from sitting to standing. So the best video that I want to see is your child actually in their most successful transitioning skill. And that was the one thing I was just talking about today with Betsy is I should have uh, give key things. If you're looking for help with rolling over, this is the video I need to see and so forth. So um, it's something I'll probably work on this weekend. Please don't expect it by Monday, but, but any video. If I need more too, I will ask. If you want your privacy, uh, I do Zoom calls all around the world. You get an hour of my time. We can schedule it here. Contact Betsy. Um, and she'd be happy to schedule it. And that's another great way of working with me. Um, a lot of people, you'll never see them. They're, they're trolls here on the group, and, uh, and you know who you are, but, but I only see them via Zoom or Skype because they don't, you know, they like to have their, their privacy, and that's just fine. We have a few more questions, but we're going to continue okay. to just answer them. Right. Um, okay. So, yeah, for the rest of your questions, this is what I want. I want the questions. Keep posting. You know, keep posting. Um, just to say, hey, how do I crawl? Again, loaded gun to me. I can go on and I could have a week seminar and just a pinky in relationship to crawling. So mm -hmm. uh, again, my brain, my anatomy, my this, my movement, I'm here. I'm about to drop 20 laws of gravity. So while I'm in this mode, you, I can go off on a tangent. That doesn't mean that helps you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help you. I have practitioners here to help you. And that's the whole goal is people don't want to necessarily care what's in my brain. They want to have help for the child. So post a video saying specifically this is what my, one of my goals are, and then we can work on it. But I would really like to start working well with everyone on this. We need to start coming up with some decent home programs. I know a lot of you aren't counting on being a therapist. I didn't count on being a therapist for my son, much less being here in front of you. And that's where I'm at now. My son's now 17. So, um, you know, my life's kind of changed from all of this, from SMA. So, and low tone, and, and that's what I'm trying to offer is, is how, how we can do all of this. We're all international right now. There's no country borders anymore. We've got to come up with now decent programs for our kids. Please, even if you've done the boot camp before, do it again. It is free. It is a refresher. It'll be a new set of eyes. Um, if anything, again, it's a daily program that you can do with your child and see it. Just pick a couple of videos that work with you and then stick with those for the next month. Mm -hmm. But at least your child will be getting services. But if they're not getting services, we're really, um, um, I don't want to be here six months from now and stuff seeing that we're really in trouble, right? Let's prevent it before it happens the way we can do it, right? Just like washing our hands, right? Do a movement lesson. And I'll see you guys. Thanks.